I, I got some notes, like I said, from your brother. So he said to ask you about John Brophy. Uh, I guess uh, he coached with, with the Maple Leafs in the 90s, and he was their coach, your coach, I guess, at the time. Yeah, so Brophy was quite a catalyst, Christ. You know, <laughs> I could I'd make, you know, a lot of people squeamish right now, some of the things he used to say to, say to us in the room. But, you know, I just uh, one quick story I'll tell you about him. And, um, I remember we were in the playoffs and we had these two uh, – native kids from up in the paw manitoba and uh and they were deathly afraid of him and uh we he had this sign made he was he do these weird quirky things but he had the sign made up said put a knife in their throat tonight boys um we're, and and end this series or whatever and, and in the sphl this first series of the of the playoffs was best of three so we won the first game and uh, we were coming back home. So we win tonight where the series is over. Well, he's got an actual like butcher knife jammed into this Bristol board. So, and I said to myself, I said, if we don't come out playing tonight, I said, that crazy fucker is going to stab somebody or hack them to the bits. Like he's fucking nuts. So sure as shit, we come out and I think we were down three, nothing in the first period. And, and I thought, holy fuck. I said to my captain at, at the time was Brian Gowdy. I said, Gowdy, I said, Listen, buddy, I said, we're going to have to make sure someone gets that fucking knife. Well, he'd already, uh, Brof was already in there like a flash. And he was 74 at the time. Like, he was like, Shit. old as fuck, yeah. Anyway, um, <laughs> get in there, and he's got this fucking knife, and he's pacing. And he's got it just like, a, you know, like a guy who was going to murder somebody. And I look over, and he, I'm like, oh, fuck, getting ready to tackle him before he stabs somebody. Anyways, he starts cutting off. Cutting off his tie, cutting off all the buttons off his shirt. And I'm going, what in the blue fuck? Anyways, he starts waving it in front of these native kids like this. And the one starts crying. Anyways, I start laughing. Going, what the fuck? So finally, Gauz gets up and says, bro, this is, this is insane. Like, and, and bro throws a knife down and we get the knife from him anyways. But, uh, but yeah, we ended up losing that game on like 5-3 five, five, or something like that. The two native kids, I don't think they finished the game. <laughs> they were scared to death. But yeah, it was funny. He was quite a guy. Oh, Jesus. I could go on for hours with stories. That guy, he was something else, I'll tell you. Yeah, imagine that going on nowadays. Like, literally. Oh. just Even just having it in the room, like you put... Like you said, put it in the the bulletin board or whatever. Yeah. Oh Jesus, you can't get away with anything close to that now. Oh yeah. I can imagine yeah. me in the room and the coach is, is ripping off the, his tie and like what? Well, bro, oh. bro was famous for his jet white hair. Like if you look up bro in in like for the Leafs and stuff like that, like um, his hair was like white, 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 white. And uh, um, anyways, we go in for the playoff series, and I come in, and I was always usually the first one at the ring, so. I'd be there two, three hours, four hours early, depending on the situation. He'd be there already. And um, I come in this particular time and he's got his head shaved into a mohawk and his white, his white hair, but he, he took like, I don't know, bingo dabbers or something and, and streaked it all blue. And it, uh, and it was running down his face and just, just off, uh, off the charts. Um, and then the other, the other, actually the one, the best story about him, I will, I have to tell this one. Um, so what he used to do, so we, in Richmond, we had two rooms. So one where we, um, where we would, uh, um, get our stuff, like our dress clothes off. And then we had our dressing room. So he would, he would always see me and he'd go around the other side and he'd go and he'd either cut my damn ties or tie my shirts and knots. And he'd just be an asshole to me all the time. So some of these ties are expensive, like, you know, so the, the I like I said, bro, these are like $90 ties. Like, you know, at the time, uh, you know, we didn't, at the, in the miners, you don't make a lot of money, right? So anyways, uh, one, this one particular time, he, used to just, he, he was, like I said, he had one eye, couldn't see for shit anyways. So he drove a Ford Temple and it was like this biggest piece of shit you ever saw. And nobody ever wanted to park near him because he just ran into shit. So I said, I'll fix them. So what I did was I, I let all the air out of his tires, all four of them. And we were at practice and I'm like, I'll fix them. So we were all, we come off of practice and we're all fucking trying to get our shit on, um, undone quick. So we get out there and watch them go out there and have a fucking meltdown. Well, we ran out and the fucker, he's running up the thing, running up the ramp at the thing and driving with flat, all four flat tires. He <laughs> lived at the Holiday Inn like 10 kilometers away. He drove all the way down to the, the the holiday inn 
and uh, the sparks are flying. We're getting, we're running in our vehicles trying to catch them. And by the time we got there, there wasn't a fucking skin of rubber on the fucking tires left. Never even, never even bat an eye at it. He was just. Did he, he not was, know, or was he just? Like, <laughs> didn't give a fuck. Yeah, just didn't care. I'll, yeah. fuck it, I'll figure it out when I get there. I'll figure yeah, it out. Yeah, didn't care. No, didn't give a shit. Oh. And he wouldn't. He was one of those stubborn guys that just. We, he was just like you know, he wouldn't give you the satisfaction of of. Uh, of coming in and freaking out. He said, fuck you. That was the way he was. So yeah, but he was a lot of fun. 